We are live. All right. Yay. Hello, everybody. It's great to see everybody. Not really, but virtually. <laughs> <laughs> Um, my name is Megan. I'll be your instructor tonight. Allie is going to be here helping me. Thank you so much for tuning into the live stream. Um, so tonight what we are going to, we'll wait a couple minutes to get started just so people can, uh, you know, start tuning in and things like that. But what we're going to be focusing on tonight is actually leading and following. So we have done a lot of steps as far as the past couple live streams that we have done. We've covered a box step, we've covered a swing step. In the past, we've done smooth swing. Um, we've covered the different timing in the box step, so you can do waltz, rumba, whatever. But today, we're gonna mostly focus on the leading and following because there's a lot of, um, I mean, when you're doing any style of dance, the most important part is to make sure that your partner, as a leader, to make sure your partner knows what's going on because if we are not dancing together, that's when it looks choppy, it looks, sloppy and we want to make sure that we are dancing together and we have some tips and tricks for you and different techniques and all kinds of different uh, games that you can practice at home to really tune in that leading and following to make sure that your dancing looks seamless it looks really nice and so we'll go ahead and dive into those in just a couple minutes after we uh, get some more people uh, tuned in and then we'll go ahead and get started um, but again, thank you for tuning in. We are here in Chicago, Illinois at Duet Dance Studio. So if you're local, hello, come, uh, come pay us a visit. Um, and if you're not, let us know where you're from in the comments. Um, and so if you are not from Chicago, yeah, just shoot us a message, tell us where you're from. And we'd love to also know like one thing about your hometown, if you have, uh, if you have any fun stories or if your hometown has like a fun history or if you just have like a weird mascot, that could be <laughs> something interesting. So definitely let us know um, where you're tuning in from. And we are excited to get started. So we'll do that in, in just a minute. Yeah. Um, as far as hometowns go, I am actually from, I'm Illinois born and raised. So I'm from a small town called Peoria, Illinois. Um, which is about three hours south of here, and uh, but I've been in Chicago for seven years now, so it's been a oh, it's been a while. Yeah, I know. How about you? Where are you? Hang on, I'll I'll give you my mic. Where where's Allie from? Oh, that's so kind of you. Yes. I I feel like I'm on a game show. I'm from Yorkville, Illinois, mm -hmm. which is very tiny as well, and it's about two hours south of Chicago. And I've only been here for about eight months but it feels like a long time. Yeah. In a good way, in a good way. It's just because it's the winter and the summer, it'll feel a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'll be a lot easier. For those of you who don't live in Chicago, it's definitely, it gets a lot easier to live here in the summer when we're not, you know, buried in snow. But it's great to live here all year round just because Chicago is such a, such a fun place. So like I said, if you're local, come check us out. So let's go ahead and get started with our first leading and following technique. Um, so this is something that we usually do for couples who have never danced together, who are just getting into partner dancing or really have no dance experience prior to this solo or partner dancing. This is something that we call the shopping cart exercise. And before we get into this, I am going to just explain the roles of leader and follower a little bit um, in case you don't know who you want to be uh, as far as the leader goes. So the leader's responsibility is to be in charge of where you're going on the dance floor and telling your partner in which direction that you're going and what turns are happening. You are basically kind of captaining the ship a little bit. And as far as the follower goes, you are going to be doing a lot of that spinning uh, that your leader will be leading you through, although the leader also has spins in certain dance styles as well. And then also for my followers, you are going to be making sure that you maintain a certain amount of space in your frame. So that's gonna be your primary responsibility is making sure your leader doesn't get too close to you. You wanna make sure that we are not accidentally chest bumping if we're doing a style of dance that we should be just a little bit further apart. Because uh, while, you know, chest bumping might be great for like a tailgate, not so much for partner dancing. So we want to make sure that we are keeping, maintaining that distance. So I'm going to be today's leader and Allie will be following me today. So again, talk if you're at home and you're talking about the leading and following, talk amongst yourselves who wants to be who. 
make sure you decide before we get into some of the leading and following exercises. Um, and again, if you are just now tuning in, let us know where you're from, maybe some fun fact about your hometown, and then uh, we'll get started with the shopping cart exercise once you guys have determined who is going to be leader and who wants to be follower. So this first exercise that we're going to do, like I said, called the shopping cart, we're gonna go ahead and break this down for you and we're gonna talk a little bit about the importance of it as well. So I'm gonna back up so you can see my feet. And then again, I'm going to be the leader. And so if you're at home and you're a leader, go ahead and hold your arms out in front of you just like this at about a 90 degree angle. And I want my followers to go ahead and put your arms on top of your leaders just like this. And up by the elbows, you wanna make sure that we're staying pretty close together. And the first thing I want you to do is go ahead and just walk towards each other. So we'll break down a little bit more of the technique in a second, but for now I just want you to walk forward and notice how I'm rotating in this space. So we have quite a bit of space here in the studio, but if you don't have as much space at home, just make sure that you are rotating your follower out of the way of anything that could potentially hurt them. You don't wanna run them into any walls or anything like that. You wanna make sure that you're constantly moving forward for my leaders. So we don't need to be moving backwards right now. Just keep moving forward. So once you do that a couple of times, just kind of make a couple circles if you need to, or you can make some figure eights if you'd like to. Then we are going to switch into another, um, we're going to keep doing the shopping cart position, but we're gonna add an extra layer onto this to make it a little more efficient. So if you're doing this at home and you're like, okay, this is fine, but this doesn't really feel like anything except walking, now we're gonna incorporate some elements that you will use later on in your dance frame. So again, we're gonna get back into the shopping cart position. And what I want my leaders to do is I want my leaders to raise their arms up so we're really connected to the bottom of my followers arms. For my followers, I want you to push away, just ever so slightly push your leader away. So like I was saying before, it's your job to make sure that you maintain space in your dance frame. You don't wanna, if my leader comes towards me and I have noodle arms, my elbows are gonna sink back and again, we're going to chest bump. Not exactly what we want. So when we're going through this, I wanna make sure a leader, you're lifting your arms, follower, you're relaxing your arms down and you also wanna make sure you're pushing your leader away ever so slightly, just giving resistance. Leaders, I want you to start with your left foot. Followers, you're going to start with your right foot. We're gonna repeat this exercise and I want you to notice something before you try this. So keep, uh, keep an eye on Allie's feet right now. As I take my step back, Allie is waiting for me to take that step. She's waiting for that signal from me to make sure that we're stepping together. So notice how she's not stepping before I'm stepping. She's waiting for me to take that step. This is the kind of feeling that we want to do in our dance frame. So even as we go through this, even if I pick up the pace just a little bit, Allie's waiting for me to take that step, giving me a little more pressure if we need it, just to make sure that we are maintaining space in our dance frame. So go ahead and try a couple circles of this at home. Go ahead and keep going around, make sure that we're really strengthening that connection and we wanna make sure that we are stepping at the same time. So followers, if you feel like you're accidentally stepping in uh, ahead of your leader, slow down, wait to feel that push backwards. And that's what's going to send you into, um, into whatever step you're doing next. So in, in the event that you saw the box step video that we did uh, a couple months ago, then you can use this in your box step, you can use this in your swing. This is applicable for all dance styles to really tighten up that leading and following and make your dancing way more efficient, makes it look a lot cleaner and a lot smoother. So adding another layer onto this, when we go through the shopping cart, um, we do want to make sure that in our dance frame, we are obviously sticking to a good technique, keeping a nice tight frame, but we also should be able to start to read each other's body language a little bit more. So instead of going straight into a dance frame, what Allie and I are going to do next, I like to call this the Tarzan technique. So instead of doing arms like this, we are actually going to go ahead and touch hands just like this. If you've ever seen the movie Tarzan, you'll, you'll recognize this. So when we go through, we wanna keep our hands touching the whole time. 
And how we do this is, as I move forward, so same thing, Allie's going to give me just a little bit of resistance so that her arms don't sink back behind her body. I'm gonna push against her and keep pushing towards her. But if I stop moving, she also has to stop moving to make sure that our hands stay connected this whole time. So in the event that I, in the event that Allie is not doing a good job following and I stop moving, she's just gonna keep going and we're gonna disconnect. We don't want that to happen. We want to stay connected this whole time. So followers, really pay attention to what your leaders are telling you and really make sure that you are waiting to feel that signal, that push back. And then if you feel any slight change in pressure, like we're going to stop moving, you also should stop moving. And just to start really getting in tune with your leader's movements. So go ahead and do a couple circles of this around whatever, whatever space you have. If you're in your living room, if you're in your bedroom, wherever you are, just do a couple circles. And leaders, go ahead and stop from time to time. Make sure that we stay connected in our hands. I'm gonna go ahead and pause this real quick. I wanna talk a couple little details for my leader and my follower as far as footwork goes. So today we're not doing any specific footwork um, we might do a box step a little bit later, but I'll break that down when we get there. Uh, we're not doing any specific footwork for now. We're just walking towards each other, or my leader is walking towards my follower. So when we do this, I wanna make sure something else that is gonna be consistently practicing our proper technique. Leaders, make sure that you are moving straight forward towards your follower. So it can be very tempting in fear of stepping on your follower's feet to start doing this little like, outside, stepping outside of their feet, but then you kind of look like a cowboy. And so we don't, again, not really the effects that we're going for right now. So we want to make sure that we walk straight ahead towards our followers' feet. So it's almost like I'm walking through a very narrow hallway. I want to keep my steps very narrow. So when we go through this as well for my follower, you also want to have the same technique of keeping your steps nice and narrow. You don't want to be trying to step outside of your leader at all. But something else that you can incorporate into your backwards step is when I take a step backwards, instead of stepping right onto my heel, just like this, and setting my whole body back, I want to stretch my toe back first. This is going to give my leader plenty of space to take that step. So instead of just going all the way back and throwing all of my weight back on my heel, this is going to make our frame disconnect just a little bit. So followers, I want you to practice taking your steps back and reaching with that toe. Because that's going to help your feet go first and your weight stay a little more forward. Because when, we're, when we eventually get into a dance frame, you want that, that forward weight instead of leaning back away from your leader that's just going to, uh, it's going to make our connection not as strong. We want to stay nice and strong, close to each other, make sure our weight is in the right place. So now, we're gonna add another layer onto all of this. So when we go through this, instead of doing our shopping cart, instead of doing our Tarzan hands, we're going to go ahead and go without hands at all. So this is if you are starting to feel comfortable with some of your technique and you wanna give this a try, this is completely based on our body language. So if I'm going through this, Allie should be able to read what my body is doing and be able to start and stop when I do and go at the same pace. You can, of course, look a little bit at your leader's feet when you're going through this, but try to actually just rely on the torso and what's happening up top because that's going to be your biggest indicator. So we're gonna go ahead and try this step. We're gonna get just a little closer together and then I'm going to go ahead and start with my left foot. Again, leader is always left, follower is always right. So we're going to go ahead and take some steps Again, just paying really close attention to where your leader's body is going. Making sure that if I pick up the pace a little bit, that she's following me. And of course, in this instance, followers, you are unable to um, keep, maintain a distance. So again, that's where that technique of taking that stretch back with that leg is really going to be to your advantage because since your leader is not able to, you're not able to actively push your leader away from you or just kind of give your leader that resistance that you need, that's when you can take a little bit bigger step. Make sure that your weight is still forward towards your leader, but you can at least get your foot out of the way. 
um, before your leader even takes a step towards you. Followers, if you're still having a little bit of a hard time predicting what your leader is going to do, we're going to revert back to our shopping cart arms, but I'm gonna add an extra little layer in there for you as well. So if you are in your shopping cart position and you are just not quite, you, you tried the Tarzan, you tried no hands, it's still just not quite sticking, you wanna make sure that in the shopping cart you close your eyes. So as soon as you close your eyes, so I'm gonna have you close your eyes, <laughs> a lot of trust. That, w that we have here at the studio. So when Allie closes her eyes, she's only able to feel this connection right here. And again, that resistance is so important because as I start to push away from her, she can still feel that we're going around in this circle. And even though her eyes are closed, she can't see me, she can still feel if I go a little faster or if I go a little slower. And again, stretching that toe back and out of the way just in case I decide I wanna take a little bit bigger step. So, like I said, this one requires a little bit of trust on your end as a follower, but as long as your leader is, um, as long as your leader is telling you exactly where they want you to go, it should be pretty simple to just really let your arms and your torso engage in your core, letting your body tell you when you need to move backwards based on where your leader is taking you. Leaders, something else when you're leading forward, just make sure that when you're sending your partner forward, again, instead of just raising the arms, I can raise my arms and let them sink behind me. I wanna keep them in front of me at all times. So if I'm going back to the shopping cart position, I wanna make sure my arms stay in front of me. So again, same thing with the follower, you wanna make sure you maintain the distance, but leaders, you also wanna make sure that you are keeping that distance and you're not sucking your follower in and letting those elbows go too far back. Because again, that's when we chest bump, that's when it's really not, uh, not what we're going for. <laughs> so please let me know if you have any questions, if you have questions about leading and following specifically, if you have questions about whether or not you want to be a leader or a follower and a little more about those roles, um, or any questions about um, pretty much anything else that we're doing here today. Uh, any of the other techniques, if you wanna do the hands to hand or you can do no hands at all. And just getting comfortable with a couple different techniques and then we'll go ahead and get into a dance frame. So just let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I'm, I'm going to keep Allie uh, checking the comments as we go. So she'll keep an eye on it. So please let me know if you have any questions uh, during this process um, and we can get started in a dance frame. All right. You ready? <laughs> so in this dance frame, what we're going to do is a pretty standard ballroom dance frame. So with every style of dance comes a little bit different kind of dance frame. So this is going to be pretty much your basic anywhere you go. As far as um, specific techniques of different styles, that we can talk about in a later lesson, or you can also sign up for our um, online program. We have a monthly subscription program where we go. you have access to um, all of our different styles of dances that we teach on our website and our online uh, program through our dance videos. And then you also have access to monthly live stream videos um, that are just for members only, and you also have access to all of the live streams that we've done in the past. And so we can really dig into some of the techniques for specifically a waltz frame, or a tango frame, or a rumba frame, because these all have different frames, but ever so slightly. But the principles are all the same, and so what we're doing today is just a standard frame that's going to help us maintain a good connection when we are dancing, and then from there, if you wanna learn a specific style, waltz, tango, rumba, Samba, swing, whatever, then you can really dive deep into more of the technique of that. But like I said, just today, we're doing a standard frame, so I'm just gonna have Allie hold her arms out in front of me. So followers, go ahead and hold your arms out in a T, right in front of your leader. And then for my leaders, I'm gonna have you karate chop under your follower's arms, and you wanna make sure that you don't chop your follower's arm off. You just wanna gently karate chop. And then relax your hand right here on at the very end of your follower's shoulder blade. So right at the bottom of the blade, you wanna make sure that you are nice and relaxed with your hand on your follower. 
Followers, go ahead and relax your arm on top of your leader. So this is going to be where our main connection comes from. So in that shopping cart position, how we're connected right here, this is going to be the same thing. Followers, you wanna make sure that you are relaxed with all of your weight on your leader, pushing down and pushing away just a little bit. So even though I am only connected by this arm, I should still be able to go through this shopping cart position with Allie and she can still push me away in this position. This we wanna make sure stays engaged the entire time. So if I start, if I'm a leader and I start to droop a little bit, my follower also droops with me. We wanna make sure that this stays connected and that's more important than if I drop and my follower maintains, yeah, keeps the elbow nice and high. So leaders, make sure you're maintaining a really, um, a really engaged frame as much as you can. You can relax it a little bit if your arms start to get tired, but again, keeping that elbow engaged at all times. This is going to be our main source of contact right here and our main connection point. With this hand, we wanna make sure that it's staying in between the two of us. We wanna be in a nice clasp right here. We don't wanna crisscross our fingers. It can be very tempting to do that when you're first starting out, but if I tried to turn Allie and we were in this crisscross position, it would really hurt for both of us. So we wanna make sure that we are clasped right here between the two of us. We don't want it too far towards Allie, too far towards me. We want it just relaxed in the middle. And then we want to stay square to each other. And then we can go ahead and try to walk towards each other. So leaders, just go ahead and walk towards your follower in this frame. Followers, again, in incorporating that technique that we talked about earlier, making sure the foot goes back, making sure that you are feeling when your leader is coming towards you. And then leaders, also, when you are finished with that, you can also give your follower just a little pull to tell them, we're not going anymore. We're going to stop. So I'll show you what that looks like too. I'll, I'll go ahead and walk towards the camera for you. So my hand right here, as I'm coming tor forwards towards the camera, and then I stop, I'm just giving just a little bit of pull. Just a reinforcement of, hey, we're not moving anymore for my leaders to my followers. Um, so let me know if you have any questions about the dance frame. Um, it's very important that you, again, maintain a good posture when you're in this dance frame. We can talk a little bit more about that in a second, but just let me know if you have any questions in the comments, just because we've gone over a lot of detail um, and a lot of technique. So just let me know if any of those questions pop up. If you are struggling with which hand goes where or is my hand okay here, I wanna make sure that um, all your questions get answered, specifically about the dance frame, because again, the dance frame is pretty much the, um, the lifeline of, of our, all of our ballroom dances. If we don't have a solid dance frame, we're not gonna be dancing together. So it's very, very important to have a nice, solid dance frame as you continue to go uh, through your ballroom. So as we go through this, let me go ahead and talk just a little bit more about our posture as we go through this. So for my leaders and my followers, we wanna make sure that our shoulders are nice and rolled back. When I'm leading, it can be very tempting, especially because we are so heavy, heavily connected on this side, it can be tempting to kind of edge forward with this shoulder just a little bit as I'm leading. But notice that that opens my frame up and that we're not square anymore. So if I were to lead Allie into anything that wasn't directly going towards her, it would just be confusing because my body is going this way. So I wanna make sure that I'm completely square, my shoulders are nice and rolled back, back and down. And I'm gonna rotate us around really quickly. I'm back and down and making sure that when I raise my elbow, it's just coming from my elbow. I'm gonna separate real quick to show you that. When I raise, it's only coming from my elbow. So it's got a little chicken dance feel to it. I wanna make sure that I'm not raising from the shoulder. Because again, if I'm too high this way and I'm, I look like this, this is not, I'm not gonna be a very effective leader looking like I'm terrified all the time. So when we're in this frame, Shoulders up and all the way back. This is for both leader and follower. If I start to lead towards Allie and I feel like I have a lot of extra room back here, that's how you know your follower is um, not, we're getting too close together. If I have all this extra space in the back that I can move and I don't have a connection with my follower, followers give just a little bit of extra push away. You don't wanna like stiff arm them, but you definitely wanna make sure that you are continuing to kind of push away the entire time or give just a little bit of resistance. Just because again, as soon as your leader loses that connection, that's when they're gonna to start to be tempted, that shoulder's gonna come forward and then we're gonna lose that squareness and we're gonna lose our dance frame. 
And so when we're in this dance frame again, go ahead and get into your frame and then I just want you to take a big breath in, roll those shoulders around and back. If you feel like you are getting ready to meet the Queen of England, it's probably the correct dance posture that you want. A lot of times people, usually it can be, it, you can have a tendency to kind of curl your shoulders in just a little bit or relax your arms just because sometimes we sit at a desk all day and it can be very tempting to kind of have those shoulders hunch over. So this can feel very stiff at first and a little prim and proper, but you wanna make sure that this is the correct posture that you're dancing in because even though it might feel very stiff to you from the outside, it looks really clean. It looks really neat and it's gonna be way easier for your follower to know what's going on. And followers, it's gonna be way easier for you to stay in tune with what your leader is trying to lead you through if you have that nice dance posture. The minute one of us falls apart with the posture, that's when things kind of start to get a little sloppy, a little chaotic. And so we just wanna, if you feel like that's happening, go ahead and take that deep breath, roll those shoulders down and back, and just start again. So when we're going through any sort of dance step, we wanna make sure, again, that we are in that connected frame and staying together the whole time. So we're gonna go ahead and just do a couple circles, making sure that we're staying connected in our dance frame, making sure that we are pushing away. So we go around and down, and we'll go ahead and just start walking. So even if you're not ready to actually dance yet, if you're just getting uh, used to the lead and follow, getting used to the frame and all of that, you wanna make sure that these techniques are things that you practice before you do your dance step and you can just walk around just like that. Again, don't need to be doing a dance step necessarily to just work on your leading and following technique. So please uh, send us a message, let us know if you have any questions about this. Uh, we are, like I said, we are here in Chicago, Illinois. So if you're local to Chicago, Illinois, we would love to see you because we do live streams like this every now and again. And if you are on our YouTube page, then you have definitely seen our um, online program that we do. Our, we uh, record our choreography. And then if you like the video, then you can go to WeddingDanceLessons.com and you can go check that out. Um, and we'll go ahead and put that link on the bottom of the screen as well so you can kind of see. So it's Wedding First Dance Lessons. Um, and when you go to the website then, like I said, there's the monthly subscription program. There is custom choreography that's available if you're getting married and we don't have a video uh, to your song yet. Feel free to shoot us a message and just say, hey, we have this song and we would love to incorporate these lifts or these tricks or these dips or whatever, and we can go ahead and uh, create something for you. Um, if you are here in Chicago, come visit us for in-person lessons because those are our bread and butter. We love doing in-person lessons to really dig deep into one style and to really talk about some of those techniques and learn uh, different steps in any particular style. We teach all kinds of styles here. Um, so just reach out to us if you have any questions um, and let us know if you are practicing your leading and following at home, how it's going. And uh, we would love to see you and see you in studio, but chat with you if you are not here in Chicago. And we would love to create something for you if you have a big event coming up, such as a wedding or a party or anything that you are getting ready for. Um, I know this year is a pretty big year for weddings since we have... Um, a lot of people who maybe had to push back their weddings uh, from 2020 and 2021. So if you are, um, if that is you and you are getting married this year, congratulations and let us know and we can create the, we can hopefully help you create the first dance of your dreams. Um, and uh, even if you're not and you just wanna learn how to dance, like I said, that monthly subscription program, you get access to all of those uh, videos of all the different styles that we teach so you can learn from the comfort of your own home. And we'll have monthly live streams with all kinds of different um, techniques for, or additional steps. We'll also include some additional styles that are not in the original syllabus. Like uh, this fall, we're doing some two-step. Allie's also doing some solo dance styles in August. So you can uh, do a little bit of solo dancing or hip hop with Allie in the fall. And uh, that's just a little bit of what we offer. Feel free to get online, do at dancestudio.com, uh, weddingfirstdancelessons.com as well. Um, and yeah, just let us know if you have any questions about the leading and following. And thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you so much.